We've really come a long way in the last 10 years or so in terms of deciding which patients are surgical candidates uh, out of the gate as opposed to um, patients who receive neoadjuvant chemo. Um, I think that um, our goal as oncologists should be to provide patients with the most impactful therapy, but the one the therapy that uh, does not really uh, impact their quality of life. And I think um, we've been we've really come leaps and bounds in um, trying to determine which patients are gonna are good candidates for surgery upfront surgery versus those who are not. Um, and I think. Um, I just think we're able to, to, particularly older patients, women are living much longer um, and uh, into their 80s and 90s. And I think we have to be able to offer those patients aggressive therapy. And most of those patients, I would say the majority of those patients are not gonna have upfront surgery based on their age and comorbidities and performance status. You have to look at their support systems. When I say bring to the table, I think you have to you know, there's some 80-year-olds that are physiologically 60-year-olds, and there are some 80-year-olds that are tru truly 80-year-olds um, in terms of their ability to do, you know, uh, activi activities of daily living, walking, um, you know, trying to get a sense of how much physical activity they have uh, during the day. I always tell my patients that, you know, debulking surgery is the equivalent of a 5K, 5K in terms of the physiologic stress that it puts on the body. So um, that's number one. And number two, I think you need to kind of look at uh, their imaging. And um, I think we've been using laparoscopy more and more in terms of trying to determine which patients uh, it makes sense to proceed with a debulking on. So I think all of those things come into play.